Big news, big night. Georgia lands five-star linebacker Justin Williams. And fresh off of that decision, um, Justin's going to be kind enough to join us, and I believe we've already got him in here. we got to get started off with a bang. we got to get this guy moving because uh, it's a big night for him. We want to let him get out and celebrate uh, with his people. Uh, Justin, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? We're doing great, well, man. We're buddy. doing great. Uh, listen, uh, so I need to know, what was this whole thing going on with the call before before you made the announcement? Who was uh, who was Bro, clowning around? My dad gave all the zoom to my brothers. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, like he, this is supposed to be secluded. He got all was in the building. <laughs> that was that was awesome. I just kind of seeing you get worked up about it. Like, hey, calm down, calm down. But yeah, uh, no, that I was fun. Just real quick, um, that moment. Can you describe it? Can you kind of? I mean, I know that. You, you'll do a bunch of other things that feel more important than that in your life, but the, just kind of putting it out there, getting it, out, getting your decision out there. What's that like for those that don't ever get a chance to do it? Uh, I kind of left out something. Uh, for one, I wanted to say uh, all my life I had a great support system. I did leave that out. You know, I was very nervous, but I had a great support system. Many people, you know, take me to practices, doing all this other stuff, like, you know, my homies and stuff like that. But, yeah, so, uh, but uh, that moment was crazy, you know. I was very nervous, but I'm excited now, you know, get that off my chest. But, you know, more to come, you know, train hard now. Uh, uh, congratulations, Justin. Um, you know, I, I always ask guys, what does it feel like, man, to just kind of have that weight off of your shoulders? Uh, you know, the opportunity to kind of go ahead and get it done. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's tough, man. There's a lot of great aspects about all of these co these colleges that are recruiting you. How does it feel, though, to have this out of the way now? Uh, it feels good, you know. Uh, like I said, I still, I still love Oregon to my heart, you know. But it just feels good to get out the way, you know. Uh, it's very stressful, you know. People talking to you that you haven't even met before, you know. So it's like it's crazy, but it feels good to get out the way. So ultimately, um, I don't want to get too bit too deep into this whole uh, into the hey, why did you do this? Why did you do that? But I do want to ask you. You only took two official visits. You took a lot of unofficial visits. What 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 was the decision behind just taking two official visits and and how big of a role did that play in your decision to pick Georgia? Uh, I'll say it played a big role. You know, uh, I feel like my whole since like freshman until now, uh, I've been scouting out coaches, giving them opportunity, and I feel like between those two schools, those coaches really gave me the best opportunity and what I was looking for, and just treated me not like an object, but more of a, as a human. So I feel like those two really got out the way. That's why I only took two. I feel like you only need the ones that really treat you well. Now, uh, break down your game for us a little bit, Justin. Um, obviously, I, I know what the tape tells us, and I know what the rankings say, uh, and those are all pretty good things. Um, but talk to me a little bit about your own game, man. What are the things that you feel like you do well? What are the things that you feel like you bring to the table? And also, too, going into this senior year, what are you trying to work on and refine about your game? Uh, I'll say uh, one thing I do well is uh, just uh, making a play when the play is needed and just going downhill and just – you know, just being everywhere. Uh, you can tell. Ask my teammates. They hate when I'm still they tackle, still everything. But <laughs> <laughs> especially when right here. But uh, um, you know, just always being in the play. So I feel like I do that very well. Uh, one thing I'm looking forward to this season is just playing with my guys. You know, uh, football can only last so long, and memories are forever. So I'm really looking forward to being with them. Now, w one of your uh, one of your teammates, uh, Joseph Jonah Janye, was uh, we had him on here a couple days after he committed to Georgia. He was telling stories on you. He was telling you, he's saying about how, uh, you know, you have parts of practice where maybe they're going like half speed and you don't really know how to do that. You kind of just run through <laughs> folks. Is that, is that true? Yeah, it's definitely true. My coaches get on me all the time. There's a couple of times where I'm just taking it full speed. I don't know how to slow down, you know. Ever since I was little, I just never liked to slow down. So I think, you know, why can't you stop, you know, just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is is football the first love? I mean, where where did where did your competitive spirit come from? Did you have another sport that you grew up loving, or was it football from the jump? Oh, uh, what? Uh, yeah, it's been football through and through. You know, since I was a baby. You know, I always played football. My brothers play football. My dad loves watching football, and so yeah, I had to play football. Uh, you know, uh, is there a guy out there that you kind of model your game after, Justin? Uh, you know, we, a lot of people have asked us to make comparisons and, and talk about what, you know, what we think about it. But is there a guy that you kind of strive to be? Is there a guy that you kind of model it all off after? Uh, I would say I wouldn't like model myself behind guys because, you know, everybody's different. But I say I like to play like the physical people like Sean Taylor. 
like he just said, Ray Lewis and uh, Luke Kikuli. I feel like those guys really like dominated and they just came to football. So I feel like that's really how I just look behind. Those are good names to base your game after, I would say. Yeah. Uh, I'd say that works. <laughs> yeah. I'd say that's going to work for you pretty good. Uh, I don't think now, who you are going to hold you back. Now, I, I did want to ask you, you played some safety earlier mm-hmm. in your career and uh, played in the defensive backfield. You know, what was the transition like for you, man? I mean, do you, and, and do you prefer – I mean, how did you how did you prefer uh, playing back there? I mean, was there – is it a little bit more exciting maybe to be kind of in the middle of the whole, all the action? Uh, I would say for me, playing safety was cool. You know, it's just something that the team needed at the time. But I feel like I'm more in the box, you know. I leave the coverage to all the DBs and stuff like that. I'm really not, you know, fluid with the hips. And so I feel like linebackers where I'm supposed to be and God led me to that moment. So How big was take that? me – No, go ahead. go ahead, Jake. No, 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 no. Yeah, all right. So take me to, take me to like, a, a holiday at your house, right? Let's say Thanksgiving or, or a Sunday dinner during the fall or whatever. First of all, we'll start with what's on the TV first. What what team? You know, obviously you live in Texas, um, Cowboys guy. I mean, what what's that? What's who's always on the television? The Bears. No, hold on. The Bears through and through for sure. The Bears. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The Bears. Yeah. What what what? What, the, what are the are those Chicago roots? How does how does that go down? How does how do you end up a Bears fan? My whole family from Chicago. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very, very interesting. So I guess you got pretty familiar watching the Bears, Roquan Smith there for a little bit, right? I mean, I, you know, I mean, I, I that's the guy, the guy that I may, I kind of, you know, kind of uh, um, compare you to because you know I think you did play some running back at some point, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I mean, what what do you think of you know kind of that comparison? If somebody was compared to Roquan uh, Smith, Roquan, I think Roquan, you know, he. He's the best ever to come through UGI for, like, linebacker-wise. He, he paved the way when, you know, people wasn't really looking at Georgia. So I think Rokon, he's great. You know, a very downhill type of person. You go make a play. I feel like, yeah, me and Rokon, we're very similar. Uh, you know, that, that, real quick, Jake, yeah, stand yeah. in the same vein real quick. Let me throw this one at him, too. All right, so that's what's on the TV. What's on the table? Like, if you're getting to pick it, what's on the table at Sunday, at that Sunday dinner? Sure, burgers and some fries, probably some wings. <laughs> I don't really, I'm not really like a hard type of, you know, it's easy to please. Really, McDonald's, really, honestly. <laughs> All right, simple food, nah, man. You, uh, I got it. You mentioned you mentioned Ro- you, you mentioned Roquan. You mentioned some of these guys that you watch. Uh, you Luke Keekley, those kind of guys. And I know that you talked to Sam Spiegelman about this, but I just want to kind of hear it from you. You know, George's development at linebacker and the role that Glenn Schumann's had in that, you know, how impactful was that in this decision for you, man? Uh, I would say Coach Schumann played a, a huge pack, uh, part of my recruitment. Uh, uh, I think if Coach Schumann wasn't there, you know, it would be a different story. But, you know, uh, God obviously put him there for a reason. And uh, Coach Schumann, he's a great developer. You know, we uh, hop on Zoom calls all the time, you know, just talk talk ball, talk football, stuff like that. It's really a great part in developing you as a human and a, as a player, I feel like. What about uh what about Joseph and his role in this whole thing, man? Um, I mean, what what how, you know him being there, him wanting to come, you guys being tight. I mean, you know, he talked about the bond that you guys shared, said that you guys are really close. How impactful was it when he decided, hey, George is the spot for me? You know, did that factor in for you too? Uh, yeah, I feel like when I took my uh, Oregon OV, I was definitely set on going to Oregon. You know, I felt like I was ready to make that commitment. But then Joseph, he said he liked UGA, so I was like, man, I got to rethink it. And then, you know, obviously we're here now, so I guess it did roll out the way it's supposed to. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, – you know, I think it's awesome. You know, you, a lot of a lot of guys, you know, you end up with like one player on one team or you end up with, you know, a guy playing offense, so you get a linebacker and receiver, a defensive lineman, an offensive lineman – I mean, you guys are kind of in tandem. One of the things I was noticing and watching your film, you lay a big hit, but if you weren't going to make the play, he was about to make the play. And and I see him a lot on your, you know, I see you a lot on his film too. What um, you know, how long have y'all played together, and what what's it kind of been like forming that relationship on the field? Because you you do kind of have the common goal there. Uh, I'll say we've been playing since sophomore year. You know, Joseph, he came in from Cairo, uh, you know, didn't really know nothing about football, but then. <laughs> but, then <laughs> but, but then, you know, we had the, you know, he matured, obviously, and it worked out for him. But I think, um, can you ask a question again? I'm sorry. It just, <laughs> it no, it's off. just, no. Well, I keep trying to ask questions thinking I can get him to pop in because he's right there. And I think I'm going to no. say something. <laughs> uh, 
I'm, I just keep. I, I, I just want him to kind of speak up and just kind of jump in and, and maybe you know uh, get involved there. But no, I was just messing. I was just saying that you know obviously you guys you know play on the same side of the ball. You got the same goal. Um, you're going to the same school. You guys have gone through the recruitment process together. What has all of that meant in terms of how close it's allowed y'all to grow together? And and and, and obviously you got a chance to do something special as seniors. Uh, for me, I feel like, uh, you know, just us being at Oak Ridge has really brought everyone closer. Like, we're a close-knit uh, type of football team. We've been since freshman year, uh, middle school and everything like that. And I think Adam Joseph and everything was really good because, you know, we got to be a part of our family. You know, we don't really like to leave each other. So, I feel like now we're just we've been, we're close as ever. I'll be honest. I didn't know that was Joseph in the background. I thought that was your uncle. <laughs> I thought it was an uncle. I really did. Uncle Joseph. <laughs> You guys have done this. You guys have had this experience. And I mean, look, you're two of the top players in America. Um, you know, you, you could have gone anywhere you wanted. Uh, obviously, both of you settle on Georgia. In the end for you, you know, I, each individually. I mean, why Georgia? What was it? Um, for me... It was uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> for me, it was um, because of the competitiveness, and then they just love to win, and then the development, and then also the connection that the whole of UGA as a whole has from the players to the coaches to the supporting staff, and then the fans, you know, yeah, that's about it. Uh, I'll say for me, it really brought me towards UGA is just like Joseph said, the competitiveness. Uh, like I said, in one of my uh, interviews, uh, since I was a freshman, I always loved UGA, you know, just going out there competing in one of the camps. And I feel like UGA brings something that, uh, you know, most programs don't really have. You know, uh, you can have Bama and stuff like that. But, you know, it's about having a family at the end of the day. You know, people got to love you at the end of the day because football can end. So I feel like they really brought that to the table. And it was like, yeah, we're going to love you uh, off the field. But, you know, when you get on the field, you got to work. And they really brought that out and, you know, just told us the truth. And I feel like, most coaches don't really tell you the truth, and they just hide behind the, uh, everything in the red carpet and stuff like that. But UGA really brought that out. So I feel like that really, like, stuck out to me. We talked to Joseph about this when he committed, too. But, um, obviously, Oregon put in a lot of work, um, you know, did a lot of things right. I mean, you said that Oregon visit, you kind of wanted to commit there. Um, what – can you kind of just let us behind the ropes a little bit and kind of let us know what was it like having to kind of tell Coach Lanning and, and your other coaches there that, that it wasn't going to be them, that it was that it was going to be Georgia and not them? Uh, honestly, for me, that was really hard. You know, Coach Lanning, he's like like he's like kinfolk to me, honestly. You know, he treated me like when I was one of his, you know, let me in his house and stuff like that. So I feel like that was really hard. That was a really tough conversation. You know, I teared up a little bit, honestly, because, you know, I, I'm a relationship type of person. So when I meet you, I really do, you know, still hold that to my heart. So I feel like that was really hard for me. I thought it was interesting throughout this whole thing that you guys, you know, being two of the top players in Texas, and we just didn't hear a lot about the Texas schools, man. Uh, we didn't hear a lot about Texas A&M. We didn't hear a lot about the Texas Longhorns. You guys both seemed to be like kind of looking elsewhere. What, what was that about, man? I mean, what, what where did that kind of come from? Is it the Chicago roots for you, uh, Justin? Uh, no, nah, I'll say for me, uh, really the – just the relationships, you know, uh, coaches, they, I feel like they have great programs, but, you know, they're not really focused on building me as a man, really focused on just the football aspect, you know. And then for me, it was just about being a priority, you know, not saying that you have to be the face of everything, you know, it's giving me millions of dollars, stuff like that. But I will say it's just treating me like a human, you know. Uh, when I went up there, it was just didn't really feel the same. And, you know, God led me to be here. So, you know, yeah. I made the right decision. Yeah, man. Now, are uh, you guys going to be headed to Athens at the same time? Are you an early enroll league going to be there in January or bolt for bowl practice or whatever? Yeah, we both are. Yeah. Woo! Okay. Are we? Are we, are we going to continue? Are we going to be roommates? Uh, have we talked about this? Yeah, I think we. I want to be roommates. I don't know about him. But, you know, <laughs> I'll say yeah, we might as well. Like, look. Who's the mess? Joseph. One? That's what I got to know. Listen, from, the from our one? interview with. From our interview with Joseph, I, I kind of got the impression this guy might be living by himself in a couple years. Might just be like, hey, listen, I need my, I need my time. I need my sleep. I need my food. You just leave me alone. Um, but, uh, well, man, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. I, I didn't want to keep you too long because, uh, you know, obviously you've got a family to celebrate with. What's what's on deck now? What, what are you guys you – know, obviously it's a little earlier for you. It's 7.30 there. It's 8.30 here. What are you guys going to do to celebrate and then kind of finish off the night? 
get lit, honestly. Party, <laughs> have a good time. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, is there a cake somewhere? Is there some sweets? Is there some uh, cupcakes or something? No, we, we don't do cakes, but we don't do cake out here. But uh, hey, that's why like you look cake. like that, and I look like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get some cheesecakes. Like Rock and roll. <laughs> All right, man. Take care. We appreciate you, dude. Thank you, yeah, guys. Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Congratulations. Thank Go you so much. Go out. Go out. Go out. That was fun. That was wow. It. it got a little hectic, and with him cutting in and out, it got a little got a little weird for me. But um, I, I wanted to talk more Nigerian food, but uh, I, I feel like everybody's starting to learn how fat I am. So, um, at least on, in my heart. So, uh, but that was that was really cool of him. And uh, yeah. hey, listen, I want to. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. It would be nice because I mean, listen, we may be in Houston very soon. Yeah, uh, if Georgia plays the national championship game there. It would be nice to have a good wing spot. But um, listen, I spoke to Justin's dad earlier today, Bernard. And um, Bruce, I'm thinking Bernard might be a Bark After Dark uh, guest yeah. at some point. Uh, didn't get to see him on there. But listen, he, he had some good stories. You can tell he's a natural storyteller, um, you know, and, and had some good stories from their official visits. And I'm thinking what we're going to do. And I talked to him about it. I said, I'd like to catch up with you a couple, two or three games into the season and maybe one more time. So you can tell us how these guys are playing and what kind of senior season they're having. It's kind of funny, man, this little Texas Conroe, Texas, uh, Oak Ridge connection with bark after dark, man. I mean, got two, uh, got two of the commitments, um, you know, on the show and everything. We've, uh, maybe the official podcast of Oak Ridge high school at this point. Yeah, I should say so. Um, and we got a correspondent now in the dad, so that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's pretty tremendous. Listen, I'll tell you this. Go over, if you haven't, and read Chad Simmons' story um, about this this commitment. Because he had, this kid gave probably one of the probably one of the best quotes you're ever going to uh, read on this. He said, going to Georgia, it's like throwing yourself against wolves. You're, you've uh, either got to eat or you'll starve. That's some badass. That's some badass stuff right there, dude. That's it like Kirby Smart trickling down on these cats, man. That's eating off the floor. That's they. They might adopt that one. You might get. You might hear that one again at SEC Media Days next year if uh, if Kirby gets onto that one, man. Well, I mean, you know, he plays inside linebacker, and the Wolf Pack is the outside linebacker group. You know, because everybody knows. Everybody knows. Chas Chambliss, El Lobo Blanco. The White Wolf, okay, yeah. uh, was 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 given it was the name given to him by other people. So, uh, um, but yeah, I mean, it's listen. Um, I think I told Rusty this man. You know, we all talk a lot, and I think I told Rusty this a couple months ago when we were talking about Demarcus Riddick, who's not going to be in this class for Georgia, and, and that's you know that's fine when you get a guy like Justin Williams. And listen. Georgia fans, I'm not going to do this, but I'm giving you all the permission in the world. When you start talking to your Auburn, um, you know, your, your Auburn brother-in-law or your Alabama buddy at work, um, you tell them that you lost to Marcus Riddick because Georgia got the number one linebacker in America recruited and he, he ran away. I, that's not true, okay? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that that's true, okay? You're saying that. You're saying that to try and get a little bit of a troll in, okay? I'm just teaching you how to troll from the internet right now. Um, but I was talking to Rusty about it, Reese, and I said, with what Georgia recruited last year, you either have to go get some developmental guys, you know, some guys that are maybe a little undersized, a little thin, You need to, they need to go a couple years. Or, or when you're trying to follow up a class of Raylan Wilson, C.J. Allen, and Troy Bowles, you go get dudes. You go get guys yeah. that don't give a rip who they are competing with. They're just there to do it. And that guy right there, I'm telling you right now, we we've got it on video. There's a video that's embedded in our stories that you and I did earlier today. And I'm saying it again right now. I don't think Georgia has signed a linebacker that is more talented than that kid right there. And, and it may not work out for him. You know I mean? He, he may, he may get a, you know, something minor may happen. It may not click for him at Georgia. Something about the scheme may not grab for him. I don't know. If you were going to bet, right if you were going to bet, what would you bet on? What would I bet on? I would bet on him. Would I would bet on it working him. out for him or not. It's going to work out for him. I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, like if you said, like if you if you gave me a thousand bucks and you said you had to bet on, um, you had to bet on him winning a buckus or not, uh, or you can just pocket the money. I'd probably take that house money and say he wins a buckus because yeah. I just listen, man. I think he's 
you know, Raylan Wilson's right there too. I would put him right there in that Raylan Wilson tier. Um, even, you know, the N'Kobe Dean tier, even though, you know, he's a different player than N'Kobe. I think he's more athletically gifted, but nicobe has got a football player inside of him that's way bigger than his 5'11", 220-pound frame. Roquan's obviously a stud. Alec Ogletree was amazing at Georgia. Oh. Um, you, know, you know, that, that, some, that, that to me is not an unfair comparison for this kid. Because yeah, you're probably right. You mentioned Roquan, and Roquan, Roquan, listen, Roquan, outstanding player. I no question about it, but smaller than this guy. I mean, Roquan was probably. I, I don't know how big this guy is. Cause I've never seen him in person. Him, you know, right? I don't, I've never seen it. Six, we got him listed at six two. So I'm right, going to yeah. give him. I'm going to give him six one, maybe six one and a half. Maybe you go look at the tape, right? Roquan probably closer to six foot than he is to six one. I mean, I don't know what he's listed at, but that would be my. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what his measurements were at the NFL Combine. I want to say it was like six feet and five eighths. That doesn't feel right to me, but maybe it is. It may uh, be. Wikipedia, I really don't. Know. Wikipedia says he's six one, and I'd be surprised to know that. But anyway, regardless, yeah, I think Alec Ogletree, in terms of you know just raw athleticism, and and also too, uh, you know, uh, Ogletree spent some time back there at that safety spot, yeah. Roquan yeah, he did. That's where he started his career. One. Yeah. Roquan measured in at 6'1", uh, 236. Okay. Producer Palmer. Uh, we love the appearances. Yeah, um, so flat, a flat 6'1". So, um, you know, listen, if he's a legit 6'2", I mean, I, listen, I don't think Alec Ogletree was a full 6'2", either. So, sure. Uh, you know, um, but, yeah, you know, when you start drawing the comparisons, having played other positions, I thought Roquan because I knew that Justin Williams had played some running back. I talked yeah. to his dad about that earlier, about him playing some running back and everything. But one of the things about this recruitment is another name pops up in this thing that's been popping up all over the place. He popped up with Jordan Thomas, and he popped up with Nair Daniels, and now he's popping up with Justin Williams. And uh, the lone star we're, – we're a long way from New Jersey at this point. Yeah. And Fran Brown's just over here, you know, being like, hey, hey, dude, you know, he's over here being, you know, I, I was going to say John Stockton to Carl Malone, but nobody likes Carl Malone anymore. So I, I'll just say, you know, right Chris Paul to it. I mean, he's over here just throwing dimes, just assists all over the place. Fran Brown's helping Georgia uh, get Justin Williams. And that's one, regrettably, that's one question I didn't get to, but I was trying to kind of steer it away from football a little bit and let's get to know uh, Justin the kid. But, um, that's really a, that's impressive. a luxury, though. That's a luxury you have when you're Fran Brown and your class looks the way that Fran Brown's class does, man. I mean, yeah. you've got the opportunity to kind of spread your wings and go out. And, man, listen, you're going to make yourself – I've said this before, and I'll say it again. You need to appreciate Fran Brown while he's here because he is not going to be here. I would be – he's not going to be – he's not going to be Glenn Schumann for you, I don't believe. Uh, I think that he is probably bound for bigger, better things in, in very short order. And uh, when you are able to put things like this on your resume, oh, yeah, I went out and got a number one cornerback and I got uh, another top 100 cornerback, uh, another top 100 prospect at cornerback. And, oh, yeah, I also helped land the nation's number one linebacker. And, oh, yeah, I helped land a four-star defensive lineman. Those are the kind of things, man, that – that's how you develop a reputation. Um, I mean, that's that's Kirby Smart esque in terms of wide appeal on that side of the ball. And um, I, all credit due, man, uh, uh, doing a fantastic job. Like I said, I hope folks appreciate what Fran Brown's doing. Let's make some Fran Brown predictions right here. Okay, I'm going to make one. I've got a chain reaction that's coming. Okay, okay. Lynn Schumann's going to take a head job next two or three years. All right. Fran Brown's going to become defensive coordinator. Then Fran Brown's going to take a head job in two or three years. And that's the way it's going to be. I think, I that's, think, that, I think that's the I, natural order of things. I think that that's an ideal situation for you. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think but that you're not going to keep – I agree with you. You're not going to keep them both for very much longer. No. and, and he, to me, He's going to, to have me, to have a spot to move up to. Well, to me, Fran's one of those guys, I think, that you could potentially go back uh, – you could go into like the Northeast – and he's going to be an incredibly appealing name. If you're a That's UConn, true. if you're a UConn, you should probably look at this guy, man. Young, up and comer, able to recruit up in the Northeast, man. A Temple where he was prior, right? Um, should probably consider a Fran Brown. I think he interviewed for that job at one point, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, you've got. I, I think that in that area, I mean, listen, Rutgers. 
I don't know that they're going away from Greg Schiano anytime, and that's a, that's a bit be a big step. But the dudes the dudes got some some juice behind him right now, and um, I think that uh, I, I think that he'll get his he'll get his pick of a, a really good job. And if he wants to go home, I think he's going to have that opportunity. But if he hangs around and develops as a DC and uh, you know continues in Georgia's program like this, uh, sky's the limit. I think for Fran Brown. I think he could probably go about anywhere he wanted to at the, the clip he's recruiting at. Jesus Christ, that kid just destroyed yeah. that kid. And that Sonic. ball just popped out. Like He gave it like, up like, like Sonic, Christmas, man. Like Sonic the Hedgehog, dude. Like Sonic the Hedgehog. Landed <laughs> yeah, on the, the ring's just flying out of the guy. Yeah, just, just, yeah, just stuff flying everywhere. Um, I just, you know, when I think about Fran Brown, you know, you talk about kind of the Northeast um, – I agree totally. Like, you know, you kind of, you know, all of those schools would be foolish not to come after them. But those, there are some tough springboards in that area of the country, man. I mean, about about the closest you get to that area is maybe Penn State, you know, just in terms of, in terms of that, you know, hey, where can you go and have a chance to win a national championship? Penn State is is about as close as you really get up in there because it has been a long time. I would say, you know, if you're not including Penn State, I mean, Rutgers had a little bit of a run with Shiano there before, but I don't think anybody ever really thought they were going to, you know, get over the top. It was just really impressive what Shiano was doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But, you know, I would – honestly, dude, I would take it probably back to to the Donovan McNabb Syracuse years when they – you know, maybe when Maryland – you know, maybe, maybe you could throw Maryland in the mix there too a tiny bit. But, you know, when Ralph Fridgen was there, they, they kind of made a, a couple of BCS um, bowl games, you know, kind of New Year's Six style bowls. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I remember when I, I believe it was uh, Syracuse played Florida one year in a bowl game, got the snot kicked out of them, I believe. Um, but, yeah, that's that's kind of what I would point to. Maybe I'm thinking about Maryland having done it's that. Hard, it's hard, Listen, time. I'm not saying – like it, no, none of those jobs is going to be easy. Um, and and yeah. Robert Bennett over here, here says, don't nobody want to go to UConn or Temple. I'm not saying that that's easy, man. I'm not saying that that's something that necessarily benefits him. But if you're able to recruit the area in the way that I think that he can, um, you know, to go into New Jersey, which which New Jersey is a sneaky good football state. Um, there's a lot of good players that come out of New Jersey. Um, you know, New York has kind of taken a turn and, and is producing a, a better at a better clip than it has over the last few years. You go get some of those kids out of Pennsylvania. Maybe you go find a kid like Yazid Haynes, you know, that's maybe a little under the radar or Josh Miller in Virginia, and you're able to pull some guys like that. Suddenly you're able to kind of increase the um, – the stature of those programs, I think you're able to put better players on the field at least. And, you know, he's had a chance to, um, to be a part of, of some great evaluations, be a part of some great recruitments. And um, overall, I think that it's, uh, you know, I, I think it's been advantageous for his career, certainly. Um, but uh, overall, I think it's, it's been good for Georgia as well that he's been there. Um, yeah, no doubt. And then obviously Glenn Schumann's the, you know, animal all unto himself, right? I mean, you know, I think Georgia fans have to kind of hope that he is the Kirby Smart to Nick Saban. Um, not saying he's Kirby Smart, not say Kirby Smart's Nick Saban. There's a long way to go on both areas. I'm not trying to make a comparison other than to say, is he the guy that's going to sit there and be very, very, very patient um, with, because he's only 33 years old. You know, that's yeah. a, that's something else you've got to consider there is Glenn Schumann is 33 years old. This cat steps in and coaches a Georgia's first Butkus Award winning linebacker ever at 28 years old. Yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of you know Glenn Schumann's resume. And uh, you know, you you always kind of have your opinions on who's gonna make a great head coach and who isn't. You know, I, I think Glenn Schumann is a very different person than Kirby Smart, just in terms yeah. of um, you know, relationally. Like I've you know, I, I've talked with, you know, Glenn Schumann before, and you just get a different vibe with talking with him and Kirby Smart, you know, who, who well, is, Glenn is Schumann, kind of – Glenn Schumann was not a player. Right, right. I mean, that's, yeah, that's and that's, I, think, I think that that's an aspect of it, right? I mean, I think that he comes at it from a different angle than most guys would. Um, he's kind of unique in that respect. Um, that's one of those you things know, I would like to sit down and talk with him a little bit more about, though, is, is I mean, I bet he played high school ball, you know? Like, I mean, sure, you know, sure. I mean, he's – He's not a small person, you know. It's not like he's just this like, 
you know, tiny little dude like Lou Holtz is. You know, everybody talks about Lou Holtz didn't play. Um, Glenn Schumann is not 5'5", 140 pounds. I mean, he's 6'1", 6'2", 200 pounds, you know. Um, but, so, yeah, I, I would – you know, something you'd like to get a chance to dig into, but you don't get to at these, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, media days in the preseason where because everybody's like, talk about, talk about, talk about you might get him, talk you about might get him, We might get him right for uh, – we, we normally get one during fall camp, don't we? Yeah, but it's terrible. I mean, yeah, so th you've got your question already done. All right, yeah, speaking of things, though, that, before we get into this, speaking of things that are not terrible, let's talk about bird dogs. Okay, yeah, let's box, do that. My box finally came in, and I was stoked to get it. Um, I got my stuff out. And listen, I've been missing out. Bird dogs has gotten better over the last couple of years. My bird dogs are like seven years old. They're kind of whipped. Uh, but I still wear them all the time because they're comfortable as hell. Those fresh bird dogs, either they made them better or it just matters because it's been a long time <laughs> since I've had them. Uh, I don't know which one it is, but let's just assume that it's uh, that it's better. Um, you can go over, check bird dogs out for yourself at birddogs.com slash D-A-W-G-S uh, and check out with our promo code D-A-W-G-S. Palmer's got some bird dogs over in the cart already. I can see up there. Um, uh, looking like <laughs> he got the, got, oh, he's got the tumbler up and the tumbler is what comes with the, our promo code. So you can get the Yeti style tumbler. It comes in. I'm not kidding you. They're the best fitting shorts. They're the most comfortable shorts. There's nothing that stains these things. I've spilled wine. I've spilled beer. I've spilled queso dip. I've spilled anything that you can imagine on these things. It all comes out. Don't worry Wait about a minute. it. I've got a rebuttal. Taco Bell fire sauce, very tough to get out of these things. Just letting you know right now. Uh, no, nah, dude. Nah, you rub a little Dawn dish soap. Listen, I've done this a million times. You rub the little Dawn dish soap on those things. You spray them off with your sink sprayer. You go hang them over the bar on your uh, – you go hang them over your shower rod. You're good to go, man. I promise you it'll wash out the next cycle. I've done it a million times. You don't know how much wine has been spilled on my bird dogs. Um, oh. So <laughs> – um, Go over, check out birddogs.com uh, slash D-A-W-G-S and use our promo code D-A-W-G-S uh, and get yourself that Yeti Tumblr. Get yourself some bird dogs. Look good, feel good, play good, right? Hey, let me tell my man John Daly over here something, okay? $72 for shorts is steep, okay? But like Jake Roos just told you, things last a very, very long time, and they are some – like eight honestly. years. I had them like They're eight years. So I'm kind of special, them. comfortable. I, I, I wear I wear them every. I wear one. I wear them every single day if I have the opportunity to do that. I wear. What do you think about the? Uh, what do you think about the Yagers? I'm gonna have to wait for it to get a little colder before I put those on. I tried them on. They're comfortable. Um, yeah. Also, to the stock, really, my look normally, I don't know. Yeah. I, you know, I'm a big thick thigh. I don't man. know, man. I put, I put them on, thought I might could give somebody a Bruce Lee cross kick or something. You know? I, felt, <laughs> I felt real athletic in those things, dude. I can see you rocking that blue polo or rocking that blue hoodie and rocking your joggers, man. I know that it's going to happen. That That's going to well, be my a joggers are blue. My oh, joggers blue. are blue. Oh, I got yeah, mine. I got blue ones. I'm gonna, oh, have to, okay. I'm gonna have to rock the gray dogs HQ uh, uh, hoodie. Get out there, there look like some Rocky out here. You know, drop some pounds, <laughs> maybe. Who knows? Uh, but uh, probably, like I said, but I hope I don't try to Bruce Lee cross kick anybody. I'm gonna tear something if I do. Uh, <laughs> Once again, yeah, for sure. But um, hey, we were talking about Glenn Schumann and yeah. you know the idea that that Glenn Schumann, you know, might you know, might you never know. If you're an elite program, your coaches may not be long for your program. They're there. Most of them are going to be in line for uh, for promotions. But, you know, I, I think Georgia fans have to kind of sit there. And, you know, if, if you're talking about dynasty, if you're talking about long term success, um, you got to you got to kind of hope he's the he's the uh, he's the guy that you can kind of keep giving these raises to and get him to stick around and wait for the perfect opportunity. I don't think sure. Kirby Smart did that. I think that's the way it worked out for Alabama. Listen, Kirby Smart almost took that Auburn job when Gus got it. I mean, he – not the no, – I'm sorry. He didn't almost take that job. He wanted that Auburn job when Gus got it, and and, and I think Gus got it over him over some stuff that, you know, Auburn probably screwed it up, to be honest with you, hindsight being 2020. Um, you know, Auburn probably messed that up. I mean, I think Kirby, you know, had a chance to maybe get some other jobs or, or looked at some other jobs. Maybe he turned some others down. Maybe he didn't. But ultimately, 
you want that guy to stick around as long as possible because um, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, three coaches that have been there since the beginning, that have been there since the very start, and that's Kirby, that's Glenn Schumann, and that's Dale McGee. Yeah, I think that's it. If I'm not, I mean, Trey Scott got there year two because of one year yeah. of Tracy Rockers. You had um, one year of you know, what? One year of Beamer? Just one year? Two years of Beamer. Two years of Beamer. Okay. Yeah, Beamer um, was there for the third season. offensive line coach. And then Todd uh, Hartley didn't even come in. Like Todd Hartley didn't even come immediately after Beamer. You had one year where uh, where. Um, uh, Jim Chaney coached tight ends and oh, James yeah, Coley coached right. quarterbacks. Yeah. That's right. So that wasn't even immediate. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you had a few different DBs coaches. Uh, mm-hmm. I think four Three. different DBs Three. coaches. Mel Tucker, Jam- Jamala well, Dye, cool. Charles you're on Yeah, you're yeah, on the you're fourth. On the um, yeah. So, I mean, you had three different outside linebacker coaches, counting Sharon Lanning and uh, Uzo Deribe, um, you know, three different overline coaches. So most positions have had at least three coaches, whereas those three, um, you know, the ones that have been there since the beginning, you got, you know, obviously as, as producer Palmer's right here is talking about Scott Sinclair. And since the beginning, uh, a guy, an unsung hero, um, the man, the dude that's probably behind the success of the entire program but would never admit it, Call Jonas film. Jennings. Oh, oh okay. Well. <laughs> Jonas sure. Jennings. Listen, Claude Felton, absolutely. Jiggs Mobley and uh and and my man Leland Barrow, Chris Lakos, all those guys at Sports Info. I don't know how they do it all. Do, do it. I mean, they couldn't do it without them. And uh yeah, so Ron Corson, as Palmer points out, but I'm talking <laughs> we're getting in the weeds here. But uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, those guys have been there from the beginning. They're part of, they're a major part of that culture, and you can see it in those comments from Kirby Smart that Palmer had of just a minute ago talking about Glenn Schumann, about hey, if there's a guy that I want to go bounce something off of that I know understands where I'm coming from on it and knows what I feel like it'll do for the program is Glenn Schumann, and that's high praise, yeah. man. That's high praise. And like I said too, I think he probably, I think he probably appreciates Schumann's kind of outsider mentality as opposed to a lot of the people in the building in terms of guys who played collegially or played professionally or, you know, had a chance to, to do that. I think it probably does provide a unique perspective. Now, I mean, Schumann's been in it long enough that he's probably been able to garner all that he needs to in that respect. But I, I do think that it's probably, he's probably able to come at things a lot differently than a lot of guys on Georgia's staff, just because of his background and where he came from. Uh, and it's a unique path that he's had. Absolutely. Just my no, I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, dude, Jake on Jake. You got some quote, you got a question for me? Yeah. Um, so I was going to go back and, uh, talk to you about, um, uh, so I've, I've been watching, uh, uh, righteous gemstones, uh, obviously, <laughs> you know, you have as well. Uh, right. Um, I'm a little behind, but yeah, I'm a little behind. Oh God, you got to catch up. There's, there's a great. There's how how far behind? I think I'm I not saw the give first. I think I thought about it, saw the first three or f- three episodes, maybe because the oh. first two weren't that great, and it really picks up in the third. Um, oh, I need more. Oh. I need more Keith. I need more Keith. I need more Judy. Um, not that I don't love Danny McBride, I do, but he's just. He's a setup man in this thing. Judy and Keith are superstars, dude. No, you're getting Super- you listen, you have got to get caught up. I, I'm not this invalidates my question because I, I can't even really ask you. Like I was just I was gonna ask, ask you. Me. Good. Well, I was just gonna ask you who, who your favorite character was this season. Oh, yeah. Thing? I mean, obviously, obviously, you know, baby Billy, I think is I'm gonna take him off. Yeah, baby Billy. Baby I'm Billy Bob. Okay. <laughs> Maybe Billy Bibelbockers is one of the great, like it just it, throughout this season so far. And I'm not, I'm not, like I said, I swear to God, I'm not going to spoil anything for you. It's just one of the consistent undertones that just keeps popping up out of nowhere. <laughs> and it's I'm, just dude, so I'm the biggest Paul here. Goggins fan there is too. Like I love him so much in Justified. Um, but I mean, dude, I, I will say this um, at where I'm at in this season, just overall, I really think, yeah, I listen to the rewatchables a lot with Bill Simmons, and okay. that he has a he has an award called the Dion Waiters Award, and the Dion Waiters Award is like, hey, dude comes in, plays five and a half minutes, 
scores 13 points, gets two steals, and, you know, has three assists, no turnovers. Like, he just – he comes in and he's just – dude, Keith is is maybe one of the funniest, like, characters that's ever been written into television. Like, all I, all they got to do is show his face. He doesn't have to say anything. Oh, yeah. They can yeah. just show that goofy-ass face of his, and I lose it every time. If I see that guy in public, he's going to end up whipping my ass because I'm going to start laughing at him, and he's going to be like, what yeah. are you laughing at? And probably yeah. just beat yeah. me to death. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, Judy's awesome too, but but Keith, dude, that that whole character, just the whole the whole arc there just kills me and uh, fires me up. So um, that's him. my so hey, listen. When uh, you we've talked about this before, both of us are are um, are uh, ordained to do wedding ceremonies, and and I want to use this time as a promotion. If you want your wedding, if you want a Georgia Bulldogs wedding, Jake Roos and I'll do it. He'll do it. I'll do it. We'll both do it. Um, if you ever want a wedding done, if you're getting married, um, I will. I, we will gladly do it. Uh, and 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 you know, for you know some some drinks, a meal, and um, you know maybe you put us up in a hotel or something. Um, we'd like to have separate rooms though, if possible, we've shared enough <laughs> hotel rooms over the years, we get separate rooms. Yeah. We'll be good to go. Um, when is the last time you visited? Um, when is the last time that you visited or did a wedding that you weren't, that you weren't officiating? When's the last time you went to a wedding that you weren't officiating? And, uh, did you dance at that wedding? Um, so I think, so I got one coming up in August that I'm going to, that I'm not officiating. Um, and I think prior to that, the last one I attended was probably like late last summer, I think. And yes, I did dance because uh, I was drunk. Um, and like, it's Chuck Klosterman. Uh, if you've ever read his stuff, really good, uh, fantastic writer, great essayist. And uh, he says, I have a rule in life, which is that if I am too sober to drive or if I'm sober enough to drive, I am too sober to dance. And uh, I kind of try to kind of live by that, that methodology. Um, If I, uh, if I feel like I probably can't drive, then I would, uh, I I could probably get out, cut a rug a little bit. And listen, man, I've had to go out and turn up a dance floor before too. Um, you know, you got, sometimes you feel bad, right? You see the, you see things aren't going the way that they need to go. The bride's over there. Why isn't anybody dancing at my wedding? Hey, you know, I go hit another shot and I'm out there, you know, I, t- I go over to the DJ. I request. Yeah. By Usher. And it's on, man. I go out there. I got, I got a whole dance down. I got hand motions. I got this. I sing the thing. We got a whole, dude, I went, I went to one this weekend for some of my wife's family I think I embarrassed my wife. I think there was a, at a point she told me I needed to cool it. Okay. I need to settle down. Um, I had imbibed uh, lots of Negronis, lots of tequila, soda, and limes. I'm a big Negroni fan. I've got a problem with Negronis. Um, especially, when free. And, uh, especially when they're free. And, uh, dude, I was out there cracking the Bernie like, like nobody's business. And the thing was, is it was like um, this was a live band. There's like a all sorts of instrumentals. There are about five different singers. It was at the it was at the Sweetgrass Inn on Isle of Palms, which is kind of a newish hotel resort. Wonderful wedding, wonderful wedding. Seth and Carol Rice put on a beautiful wedding for their daughter Annie. Uh, did a phenomenal job. But uh, yeah, my wife had to tell me to cool it at one point. I think I probably, I think I probably pouted a little bit. I think I was probably like, oh, "Tell me to be quiet." I think you, I'm you told me. Time. I believe you told me that didn't the uh, the father of the bride said that you had the best time of anyone there? Yeah, he did. He said, "Yeah, I think you had <laughs> anybody there." So uh, there's video somewhere, and uh, Dylan Brooks. Before we go, buddy, um, I will gladly come to Rome and do your wedding. I will. I, Roos, and I, Roos and I will both do it. We'll tag team that thing up at the front. Um, you know, we'll. We I'll wear whatever you want to wear. What do yeah, we? I'll wear a Dollars HQ hotel? hoodie. That was we What's stayed in that? that hotel. That we stayed in that super nice hotel right across from uh, the courtyard. Uh, I believe it was. Yeah, it's was the courtyard. Yeah, it was nice yeah. though. That was a nice Just courtyard across the river. Yeah, and uh, yeah, dude, yeah. I will go. I will absolutely go back to Giggity's. Uh, we will do a meet and greet there. Uh, we will go to Harvest Moon and have drinks. I'll go to Jefferson's and try to get oysters again. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we can do the whole thing, man. I love Rome. Rome's a cool town, man. Rome's a yeah. Rome's an underrated city in in Georgia. As I said, man, you drop somebody if you just blindfold somebody and come set them set them down in downtown Rome, they're like, man, I'm somewhere, dude. Yeah, I'm I'm in a very nice place. Now you can venture outside those confines of that downtown area and you probably wonder if you're in a third world country i'm just joking that's <laughs> that's where I'm from. Uh, but um no ultimately uh it, it's a really cool place but hey uh thanks so much to justin williams and joseph jonah Janye and my man bernard for setting that thing up um you know huge for him georgia adds five star plus uh linebacker justin williams to its class and uh Huge addition for the Bulldogs. Uh, huge addition for Bark After Dark. Uh, Palmer was telling us we had some record numbers rolling uh, coming through Bark After Dark tonight. So sorry, real sorry, you know, if Matthew Matt Godwin, Matthew, I'm calling him Matthew Godwin, Matt Godwin, uh, you know, if your if your record on Bark After Dark falls, I do apologize. It's not our fault. It's Justin Williams's fault. So be mad at him. And uh, we will catch you guys later on the week, the Georgia Show Wednesday night. I'll be on there, and uh, I believe it'll be the first show. If I'm not mistaken, for our new so. the new addition to our site, Jeremy Johnson, myself, Jeremy Johnson, and Wes Blankenship will be on Wednesday night. We'll be talking about this and a lot more other stuff. So come check us out. We love you guys. Birddogs.com slash dogs.